Hi, welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco. We got a little confused with the intro music there. It's a, it's a strange day for us. Things are a little bit wild. And uh, so, uh, welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco. Today we have a very special guest. We've been trying to get her on for weeks. Uh, she's uh, a targeted individual and uh, she's been surviving it quite well. I uh, remember as we interview these targeted individuals, it's not just like talking to your neighbor. It's, it's, they're under extreme pressure. A lot of times they'll be hit with waves. A lot of times uh, people will try to interfere with the broadcast. So uh, always cut them a little bit of a break. Uh, but I wanted to, I want to make sure that uh, we uh, get a wide range of targeted individuals so you can see how they're working out. And you notice that they're mostly women. This is mostly a crime against women. So let me introduce you to uh, our welcome guest today. Her name is Renee Rowley. And uh, she's joining us from somewhere in the eastern United States. Welcome to World Beyond Belief, Renee. Good to see you. Why, thank you, Paul. How are you doing? We're doing fine. Uh, tell us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, your story, how, how this whole thing began. Okay. Well, um, I think I said earlier, I'm all new to this video. I've never done a video interview before, so bear with me. And I also ask that your audience. Um, well, my targeting started back in 2000 well let me go back a bit um um i've lived alone just about all of my life and i live in virginia and i moved to in 2006 um, after graduating from the university of wisconsin madison and my targeting started I want to say about 2008, um, two years later. And what happened, I had just moved into a, a town home and um, everything was, I was just settling in. And then all of a sudden, um, I started getting children, um, making a lot of noise on the, I shared a, a front porch along with, a neighbor next door who lived in a town home. It was mostly, it's all town home community there. And so the children, they started making a lot of racket. And I tried to get my landlord to help. And, and so they were pretty much overtaking me. They were doing this um, once they got out of school and and it got so bad, they would stay on my porch 11, 12, 1 at, at night. So I eventually I had to get the police involved because my my landlords, the rental office, I tried writing letters, getting help from, from them, and they wouldn't help me. And so they told me that I needed to call the police. There was nothing that they could do. That's what I did. And so the police started coming out. They were making lots and lots of visits. To my town home and it was just very stressful and at that time i didn't know you know why all of this was happening to me why are why are all the kids hanging out on my front porch i mean they have the whole neighborhood <laughs> um porches to hang out on but yet they were all congregating in my town home so unbeknownst to me i said well i'm not getting help who's going to believe me I mean, this was happening every day. And the weekends, it would get bad when the kids were out of school. So I went and purchased a surveillance camera. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. And I went on and bought some VHS tapes. And I started recording. And it, it began to get very worse. Um, it wasn't getting better. They did not know I was recording them, but the kids are on my porch 
they're also, they begin to at a bedroom upstairs and I would be upstairs in my bed sleeping at night. They would hang out, come and knock on my door and run. And I, at first I didn't know what was going on. I went down, nobody there. But then when I looked over the video the following morning, captured right there, knocking on my door, running away. And then it got even worse. Um, I would open my door up in the morning and I would find a lot of garbage, trash on my front porch. I They would put a pair of girls' pink underwear on my front porch. I'm like, what's going on? Then they put another time, they put a Ziploc bag of dog feces in it. So I had all this going on and they were throwing stuff on my lawn. And so I was just getting very stressed out about it. But at the same time, trying to as normal as possible. And so I tried to get my landlord at the rental office. They wouldn't help. I even called the corporate office. They wouldn't help. So eventually, but I had to get the police involved. And so I called my local precinct. And like I said earlier, they were coming out there quite often and they were getting really frustrated at me. I mean, not at the kids. They wouldn't do anything for the against the children, but it was always it would always be against me. And so, call in after the police left. They didn't do anything to help my predicament. I called into the police station and requested to talk to a sergeant. And so I get, they put me on hold. They came back online, and I explained to him. I said, "Listen," I said, "Look." I've been trying to get help with these kids and my landlords told me I need to call you up for help. And he went ballistic on me. He said, well, he, I mean, I had never been talked to like that before, um, but he was so mean and nasty to me on the phone. He said, well, you're lazy. If you don't like it there, why don't you move? And he slammed down the phone in my ear. And I was shocked. I'm pleading, trying to get him to, to help me. And I got the reverse. And he slammed down the phone. I was very much hurt and insulted. And so I immediately called back into the precinct. I'm almost in tears. I'm almost in tears. And I re requested that I talk to his supervisor, his superior. And so that went on and um, they told me I needed to make a complaint to the Internal Affairs Department. And I did exactly that. The, um, I think it was the following day or the day after, I went in and made a, lodged a complaint against that sergeant. Whole about a few days later, I'm upstairs in my bedroom. I don't know if I was cleaning or whatever. I heard a loud crash, and I thought it was my shower curtain falling down onto the floor. And at the time, uh, a portable shower rod, you can extend them out and they will stick up on the wall, and you can hang the shower curtain. I thought that had fallen, and I went and looked in into the bathroom and nothing, it's still up there. And then I go and venture downstairs and into my living room. And, but I look to the left, which is where my kitchen and the front door is. But when I look to the right, immediately I look to the right of the room, um, my sliding glass door, one of them, someone had threw a brick through the sliding glass door. You can see the slow motion of my sliding glass door crumbling, going down pieces by pieces. I mean, it was slow action and eventually none there. The sliding, all the glass, it was all on the patio inside of my living room floor. So that was the first incident. And I believe that came because I had complained against that sergeant. Um, I had never had anything like that happen to me before. Um, 
that began my targeting. Um, I was. Let me interject something here, Renee. This is what happens a lot of times over something silly like uh, complaining because you're being billed for aftercare service or writing to uh, the police. <clears throat> I thought when you said it initially, you thought it was the children who were targeting you, which, which could be true. I, you know, they do customize this stuff. So I've heard incidents yeah. of a guy who he uh, he hated coughing, and so his perp started off gang stalking by coughing, coughing out in front of his building, coughing all night, coughing near his cubicle, a cubicle at work, and uh, it was uh, it was horrible for him. So, but you think that it started when you started dealing with the police? Yes, I really truly believe it started there because uh, when I moved to Richmond, I rented out a room from an elderly lady home and I had pretty much she was up in age and I started taking over doing household housekeeping and gardening for her and the gardening was perfect and I later on I'll tell you about it but I do all of this targeting I had to move so many times and I did have to go um called her and asked her could I come and live with her again um I didn't want to do that but fast forward this was back in 2011 and said I'm sorry I'm again I was being really targeted they really had upped it by 2011 but thank God I had her to call on and she let me rent a room from her. And then I, you know, continued to help her out. And I did a gardening. We went to Lowe's and I'm doing all this beautiful gardening in her front yard. And lo and behold, I, I got the shock of my life. The neighbor next door came and knocked on her door. I'm upstairs and she called me down. And I said, yes, Miss Margie. She said, um, someone has torn up the garden. I said, what? So I go out and look downstairs. Yes, this is how the targeting works. So when I went outside, I still have pictures of them um, destroying the garden to this day. I still keep it with me. And I went outside to investigate, and sure enough, I mean, I spent a lot of work. I mean, I was out there for doing gardening and planting her um, perennials and annuals and all this. And they had done unplucked it, each and every one of them, and thrown them all over the sidewalk. So I knew that my targeting did not start because when I lived with her in 2006, I did the gardening, realized it. But now all of a sudden, I live with her again in 2011. Now I'm facing not only that vandalization of the property, but they started harassing me with cell phone calls. They would my mail. My um, I would throw out my garbage, and I got a call one day when I was living with her. I received a call and said, "Yes, this is Doctor So and So, my doctor." And I'm wondering, like, who is this? And they're saying, "Do you need a new prescription?" And so what they've done, they went through the garbage um, dumpster in the back in the alley pulled out my garbage along with my prescriptions, the bottles, and and got the information from there and pretended to be my doctor. Yes, this is Dr. Wise. Um, do you need a new pre pres prescription refill? So, and when I, it was from a, a perpetrator. So it wasn't my doctor, but, um, did I you think the doctor, which year wasn't wasn't him. 
Of course not. Of no. course not. They no, were. And then eventually they got um, my landlord. She was renting another room from this lady. She. They eventually got her. Now we rented rooms both next to each other, and and they got her and her boyfriend to start targeting me. So it was awful. She was always trying to pick fights with me and understand what was going on. But, um, but you know, back to what I was saying, um, that incident at that town home, it really, you know, threw me for a loop. And so my targeting began to escalate. It was getting serious. Um, eventually, um, I was being harassed by the children. I couldn't leave my town home without them following me. And um, anywhere, I was being bothered. So eventually it got so bad, my landlord um, wanted to evict me. And it was just an awful injustice that was done to me. Um, I still think about it today. But I did not deserve that kind of treatment, and, and especially being evicted. So, so why did your why did your landlord evict you? Because the because you were being targeted and it was causing too much uh, confusion in the uh, in the complex. Well, the neighbors, you know, they got word that I was complaining about their children, and so all the mothers they were ganging up against me. It was horrible. I really should have moved, but I had just moved there. And so it's just becoming unlivable for me. I tried to stay there as long as I could. Um, eventually I got evicted. I got an uh, attorney that helped me and he was able to get me to stay there until the end of my lease. Really, I was the eviction, I would have had to move at least five months um earlier but because of him he was able to get it work it out where i can stay until the end of my lease so i found another place and oh my god that was this was the worst of all of them i would go on to live at, at several other places but this was the worst because i lived in a i moved into a fourplex and so you have an apartment living above you I rent an apartment on the second floor. And then on the other side, you have the same setup. And the front door is used as the entrance. And you have stair, um, stairs that lead up to the second floor. So um, after my friends helped moving me in, I had to hire movers. And I had a friend help me move also. And we talked a little bit. He sat on my sofa and we talked. And he left. And why, hey, you know, this is going to be a, a fresh new start for me. Um, no longer stress. I'm going to be able to start my life over again. You know, no problem. But as soon as I left, wow. They slammed the door. And it, they slammed it so hard, it shook my my whole entire apartment, especially where, where I was sitting on my couch. And that's what started it. So they started targeting me. Um, they started hitting up on the ceiling. And they would go about everywhere I walked in my apartment. There they were. Hitting, you know, like that. Just hitting up on the ceiling. And then they would use the doors. We had a front door and a back door. And they would slam those doors so hard. My whole entire apartment. And so I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe. Uh, I let me ask you a question. How did you find out about the apartment? Because a lot of times they'll custom make an environment and then lead you to that environment so you'll rent there being surrounded by perps. How, how, did, how did you learn about it? Well, actually, it was in the ad. There it was an ad in the newspaper. I think, if I could remember, um, this was in moved there in May of 2010. 
So, um, and I found the ad, I believe it was on Craigslist, or it may have been a local newspaper. And the landlord was nice. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Um, the people who were living underneath me, they moved out. They moved out into on the other side of me. And then all of a sudden, my neighbor who lived across from me recommended these new tenants to rent the apartment underneath me. And so I had, you know, made myself acquainted with my neighbor across from me. We talked a little bit. You know, I just moved in and I met her the the following day and I was sick. And then all I know, the neighbor below me moved out with her children. And there was another uh, person, a new tenant that moved in with her son. But what happened, she would, she, her name was Sona Lee's, but she would have all her family members and friends come in when she was not home. So I thought, you know, her coming and leaving, and I thought, oh God, now I can go take a, a nap. No, they will still keep the noise up. And so I had to set up a surveillance camera on them as well. And so I would go over the footage, the video footage, and sure enough, there would be people entering her apartment day and night. They kept it up all during the night. They would be making a lot of noise underneath me. They were slamming doors all night, yelling, screaming. Because what this is, part, part of the Targeting program is noise campaign. So they absolutely do not want you to have quiet enjoyment of your living environment. Those so, from your camera, were, were those people, uh, did they look like they normally belonged coming in and there, in and out of there? Well, or they, friends, they were her friends and her family members. I will later learn they were her friends and her family members. She would not be home. Uh, and so, but they will still keep it up even when she was there. And so that got bad. And then my neighbor across from me, she got in it. And then the neighbors with the children, she got in it. So now I had all of those three neighbors. <laughs> so I couldn't leave the building. I leave, they're right there waiting by the stairwell, ready to say, oh, you're, you're crazy. And, I would, and so I try, I would have to get my landlord involved. And, um, I'm like, please help me. My neighbors, they're making all this noise. But then the the, land, the tenant across from me who had been there for a while, her and a boyfriend, she would call him and, and then he started taking up for them. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It was getting really horrible. So it got so bad to, I had a balcony out back. They would come up to the back and start they would actually walk up, I have it on video, and start knocking on my door. They would come to the front door and knock on my door. It was awful. So the first few nights I was there, that's well, actually the first night. That's when, for the first time, I was introduced into directed energy weapons being attacked. I didn't know what was going on. I was, they were already slamming the doors and hitting up on the ceiling, no matter wherever I was in my apartment. But now I was being awakened at all hours of the night, and I didn't know why. I decided to um, set up my surveillance camera inside of my bedroom. And that's when, when I looked over the videos and listened to them, I was shocked. And then my neighbors, they would also keep the noise up throughout the night. But when, so it's a combination. Um, you have, I mean, if they cannot get any neighbors to harass you with these noise campaigns, then they're gonna use the infrasound to send it on the inside of your, your living space. Okay, they can do that, but first they will co-op and with your neighbors and get them to to make the noise but if you're somewhere like if you're in a home by yourself 
that doesn't, there's not a basement or someone living underneath you, then they go ahead and pick it up and send the directed energy weapons. Whether that's from afar or coming, whether that's coming via satellites or whatever, but that, that is how it's done. I've lived in enough places to now know. So they had people living underneath me, so they had them to deliver the noise campaign um, against me. But now they started, um, I eventually had to get the police involved there too. Now, as much as I didn't want to do that, I said, oh no, I don't want to buy it. I really didn't because I was like, they're going to think I'm cool. cool. Well, they because yes. they're already going to look up. That's right. You had such bad luck with them before. I'd stay away from them. But you went to the police. Yeah. I didn't want to. But what happened was they, it got really bad. The first week I was there, I'm in my bed. This is about 12, 1 in the morning. I have this on video. I'm in my bed. I hear seven rounds of gunshot. Pow, 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 pow. The neighbors below, they're all, they were already fussing, carrying on with their noise campaign. They were already fussing with their noise campaign underneath me. They all gather in the bedroom underneath me. They're making all this racket. So then they eventually they go out back, some, some um, rounds of gunshots. And so it cut, it frightened me. I like what's the, I've never heard a gun being shot other than watching TV or the movies, but in real life, no. So what it was, and I had already contacted the precinct where I live, okay, because they were just getting to be too much. And so eventually. I contacted, I called the police, you hear me on the video, I'm calling a precinct and telling them about it. And what they did, they had a lieutenant come to my home the following day with another officer. They wanted to review the video. They sat down at a computer, they can hear all that. And so what they did, I told them all the problems I was having. He was such a nice lieutenant. Um, he said, look, he said, this, this will not be tolerated. I mean, they were really taking me over because she had her family and her friends. I mean, they were harassing me. I couldn't go out back. They were harassing me. When I come downstairs, they were harassing me out front. And, you know, it was just awful. And he said, look, if we have to, and it, it was only because of my efficacy. I was calling in pleading for help. And I said, look, they're going to kill me. Something can happen to me. They're already shooting guns. I said, what's next? So I complained to the top person, the general, the sergeant, the chief. Okay. I was willing to do whatever it took, okay, to expose this. And they didn't like it. My neighbors didn't like it, but I didn't care. So they had it. Let me tell you how far it went. They had a police in his, his car, patrol car, sit out back and park. They said, if we have to sit out here all day and all night, we will do it. And so he would send his officers over. <laughs> I would look out my bedroom window and there they would be parked out. And then it piped down a bit. And if I have to drive my, my, my trooper car, my my car up to their door. I will do it, he said it. So he was meaning business, but it was all serious, you know. And so they were able to do investigation on my neighbors below and they found out they were bad. And at the same time, my my landlord, he's wanted to evict me um, because my neighbors, they were all complaining on me, telling them lies about me. I'm the one making the noise, they were saying. I'm making a noise. I'm keeping them up. The kids are, their kids are harassing me, throwing rocks at the windows, throwing rocks at the AC unit outside. They were, it was just horrible to, to live there. And then um, I didn't know what I was, I was being sleep deprived. 
I even made a little pellet on my dresser, my five drawer dresser, just to see if I can escape from it because I didn't know what it was. So um, you imagine a, a, a five dresser about my height, I'm five seven, so about five five somewhere. I get a chair and climb up there and just try to cuddle up with a pillow. It wasn't working. And then I would go in the closet. At the time, I didn't know what I was, what was going on, and what I was being attacked with. Actually, um, it got bad. I got the neighborhood association involved. I mean, it was just awful. The police was coming. I, they got, I got the investigators involved. They're detectives. The police department detectives. I'm like, please help me. I have video of them harassing me, and they would send. They would they brought me down to the precinct to go over my videos and all this infrasound they're listening, but they didn't want to do anything. Their hands were their hands were tired. They did not want to do anything, only to recommend that I move. Um, even another detective, um, he did some investigation of my other neighbors where I live. And bad area, bad neighbors. And he, he came up, listen, as far as what he did, he said, okay, I'm going to come over there and I'm going to sit with you in your bedroom while you're lying in bed. Because I'm like, I can't sleep. There, all this noise, I'm being, <laughs> so he actually, he said, I'll be getting off at a little after 11. I should be over there by 1130. The precinct was probably about 12 minutes away. And he actually came up. He came up. He snuck in. I said, be real quiet. Now, this was before I even knew that I was under being, being monitored, okay? I didn't know anything about directed entry weapons. I didn't know anything about um, remote neural monitoring. I didn't know anything about mind control. I didn't know anything about my mind being read at all times. I didn't know anything about them being able to see me inside of my home. 24 seven, seven days a week. So I'm, and you just think like you're thinking without even knowing it's being, um, you know, listened to. And so I have them sneak in. I said, okay, sneak. So he sneak. uh oh. Okay, you're back. So he snuck in. Can you hear me? Uh oh, I can't hear you. I've lost. No, no, we're fine. That was my. Okay. You so couldn't. he's. So I this man. I couldn't. Hear you. Okay, go ahead no. with your story tonight. We can hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry about it, but um, no. he snuck in, and. Guess what? Guess zero noise. Oh no. No. They didn't make not one sound. It was so peaceful and quiet. And so that was the end of that. He left. And as soon as the door closed behind him, they started it up again. So I'm like, well, how did he do that? I, I didn't know. And there you know, surveillance. So eventually, uh, I had to, it was really bad. And my, my landlord eventually evicted me. But not only that, um, the police department, I, I was so very good friends with this at the time where I lived at, well, he was a sergeant at the time. Um, he did an investigation of my neighbors living below me, and he had talked to my landlord, and my landlord had big. And I didn't know that though. I just happened to be looking out my there's a U-Haul truck, and I'm like, well, what's going on? He had evicted them, so they had to hurry up and leave. It was they had to get out within 24 hours. Oh, so. Yeah, so that was a good defeat on my part. I won that battle in a way. 
Um, because I live alone, I have to advocate for myself. Who's going to do it for me? So I will speak out. And so that's what got me a program advocating for myself. But that's all right. I don't mind advocating for myself, um, even if that costs me to become a target. Um, but, you know, Paul, what I really wanted to talk to you about before time goes by, and hopefully we'll be able to do other interviews somewhere in the near future. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of audios and videos for other target individuals. Mm -hmm. You're probably, probably wondering right now, how can I have such good composure about myself in explaining all of this and being able to laugh and not have it affect me at all? I've had to learn that did not come overnight. I had to learn it because, you know, most all of this program is geared towards um, a cause and effect events in the target life in order to have an effect on them. And I always say it's going to be up to the target individual whether they're going to take their bait or not. You don't have to. So if they send gang stalkers after you, but ignore them and just keep it moving. That's number that's number one, my motto, keep it moving. Or you can go ahead and let them have an effect and start yelling and cursing at them. That's not doing the target any good, engaging, um, doing what they want them to do. It's not helping them at all. Then they want to go on YouTube and Facebook and blog about it by what they did. Um, already I already know who I'm dealing with remotely okay they are you know they are with you 24 7 and that may sound crazy but it's remotely so you are maybe connected to another person or people like a brain-to-brain -brain computer interface or intelligence so they're connected with you and they will try to have as much effect on you throughout the day and night. They try to control you remotely using their technology. It's up to the victim to decide whether they want to go on living life, enjoying life in the midst of this targeting, or have them take control over them remotely and all these events that they set up in their lives. And so I've never entertained them. They used to gang stalk me, eventually increased in doing that, but I didn't pay it any mind. I just kept on about my business and going about my way. And then eventually it stopped. So I no longer get gang stalked because these criminals, actually I call them murderers, they're, they have very boring jobs, okay? They're sitting in front of a computer, looking at the target all day and all night. There's nothing much to do. Oh, they signed up for it. We didn't. If I had to trade places, I would prefer to be a target. It's just a boring life, okay? But they have the technology to see if they can have a cause and effect on you inside of your home or while you're away from home. They're always trying to get your attention using their technology. And so what I do, Paul, I go, I get things done. I get things done in my life every day. I've heard from targets where they're afraid to leave their homes. Some of them, they're scared to leave, to go out. They're afraid to do, they're scared because they're scared. And see, that's part of, that's the logistic of the program. They want to instill fear, keep you scared, using all their resources, all of their technology. And I have to admit, I was never scared, even in the high, the high point of my targeting, I still went out because I was not going to let murderers or a group of criminals prevent me from enjoying life. 
And to this day, they don't. They do not have a cost and effect on me. I live out my life the same way as I've been doing before they came into my life. I mean, they have violated my my civil rights. You know, I've never been happy about that, but hey, it is what it is. And, you know, I hear so much from targets on Facebook about being tortured, sleep deprived, and I get all of that, but that's not going to help me any by complaining every day because they're taking joy and delight of all that, all that blogging. Oh, I'm being tortured. They love that. You're dealing with a bunch of narcissists, very sick people, okay, that they don't have anything better to do than to have fun on the target. And so, you know, I have videos where they have, you've had Catherine Horton on and Karen Stewart, and they talk about the technology and all that. Really, in order to deal with this psychological warfare program, you're going to need to have some psychology in order to deal with these murderers. You really do, because try and keep you in a state of frustration, depression, sadness, blueness, I mean, darkness. It's all negative. There's nothing positive about this targeting program. They want to destroy your happiness every day. But see, I refuse to let them do that to me. They have, I've been a target for nine years. Never, they have yet to prevent me from enjoying life. I set out to do things and I do them. I complete them. In the middle of all their evilness, I still do it. You know who I'm dealing with. They don't have a life. They now my life is their life. Okay? They don't have a life. You cannot have a life when you've made someone else's life your life. So they're not enjoying life. Um and they're not. So they get to live out my life through me. I do. Um, and they, they're, I'm quite sure they're saying, wow, she really gets it done. No matter how much hate we spew on her, she still get it done. Let me show you this. I like to cross stitch. Look how complicated this is. You see this? Yeah, that's beautiful. I've done that in the middle of my targeting. Now that's a lot of work. Jody That's again, a lot of work. I switched screen. Show it again, Renee. And it says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes, I can see it. You know what you're saying? I don't know whether <laughs> we, have a, we have a panelist, Dr. Millicent Black. I don't know whether you... Uh -huh. If you watch the uh, Crime Fighters Forum, Techno Crime Fighters Forum, she's on there. Uh -huh. She said exactly uh, what you say. If, she says, if you let them ruin your life, take the joy out of your life, uh, they've won. So that's... Uh, that's true. That's exactly what she says. That's true. Because that's what they want. They want you to give up living. That's why they were put into your life to prevent you from enjoying life. And they have all the resources to try. And notice I say try because they have not succeeded on me, but they will try. And also targets don't understand. You know, they complain about the same old thing every day. But what they're not understanding, this doing what they're doing. They're being paid to do this. They have to follow a protocol straight line. They can't veer off and let you sleep for eight hours. <laughs> That's not part of the protocol. They have to get you up, wake you up all throughout the night. If you break, you know, it's part of that. But you have to find some, some like take up, you know, in my audios I'm doing for TIs. Take up a hobby, do something, take up tennis, um, go out, 
you know, I, in the midst of my targeting, I've joined a dating site. Um, I've been out on dates um, in the middle of my targeting with the ambulance and the fire trucks coming around the restaurant. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm not going to let uh, a bunch of no-gooders um, destroy me from living life. So I'm still doing the things that I've been doing in life. Um, they can sleep deprive me all they want to. They do that too. Some targets may say, well, she's not a target. I don't hear her complain about being. You dropped out a little bit. Renee, keep coming at it. Keep talking. Let's see. <laughs> they don't. They must not like your advice, Renee. Can you hear me? I can't. You stop even moving. Okay. Yes, I've been. Oh. She ball all together. Let's wait a minute and see if she calls back in and uh, see if we can get this going that way. Here we go. I can tell you that um, she has been wanting to be interviewed for a while now, and she's really helping. She's sending, sending us articles and really, uh, really helping us figure this out. I hope she has a website. Apparently, she's helping TIs, and I'll try to get her website if we can't get her back on, at least we'll try to get her so that we can uh, we can put her connection down below. But uh, here we are. Um, I will tell you that we do have the Techno Crime Fighters Forum here on uh, Pinecone Utopia channel. We try to do it 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time every week. And... Uh, Sometimes we can get through, sometimes they all show up and everything's fine. But uh, other times we uh, have a little trouble getting, uh, getting uh, uh, set up like that. So here we go. Well, I can't seem to get her back on. So we're going to sign off and uh, call it a day. And uh, we'll try to get her back maybe in another interview uh, going on like that. So. Thank you very much for watching. This is Paul Marco encouraging you to watch the Crime Fighter Forum. And uh, goodbye. Sorry Hi. about this, Paul. Um, I don't know how this Google Hangout works. Yeah. Um, when you're waiting for me, I'm trying to connect, but. I didn't read the disclaimer at the bottom where it says, I understand you're supposed to check. Oh. And I didn't know that you were supposed to do that. Check, check what? Well, whenever you call me, there's like a, a, a box I'm supposed to check to uh -huh. proceed. Okay. And so that's why I had to figure it out. I scrolled down and that's where I saw it. So. Okay. Well, I signed off, but we didn't stop the broadcast. So if you have more to say, I'd, I'd love to hear you say it. Oh, my goodness. We're all done. Wow. Well, now we're just, and now we're rolling by pretty fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So uh, this is, uh, I guess, uh, do you have a website or something that people can uh, contact you via? Uh, you said you do things with targets? Well, I don't. I'm just now doing some videos and audios, which I'm just talking to myself, but recording it. <laughs> just some informational videos and um, audios that I'm doing. Okay. Are you able to put them up on YouTube? Well, some of them are long. Some of them I have put up. Um, but this is all new to me. This is it's a new territory for me. Okay, um, do you have a YouTube channel? 
it, yeah. it's a lot of work because I'm trying to learn how to splice the long videos up because uh -huh. YouTube, you know, you have to use a different format. Yeah. And um, that takes time and it's a lot of work. So I was able to get some of them uploaded to YouTube. Good. Do you have a channel? No, that's um, under my name. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's up there. Or, and by the way, my, my last name is pronounced Roll. Roll. So the E is silent. Okay, I've been saying Rolly for as long as I've known you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. It's Roll, like Esther Roll from The Good Time. Right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it well, is. Uh, it's just Renee Roll. It's not much. I still, you know, have a lot of things to put up there. I just thought I would test it out. Okay. Well, I'll encourage anyone who watches this to go to there and give you some comments. Maybe even subscribe. That would be a good thing. Oh, I don't want any comments. You don't want to be caught. I'm ready for that right now. This is you know, funny thing, That's what we did too. We when we got on YouTube, we shut off the comments because I, I couldn't take it. And uh, but after right. a while, you get kind of numb to the. You know, there's a whole bunch of there's perps on there. There's NSA guys and CIA guys. You know, if you come out with any truth or anything that's really profound, uh, they'll tell you that yes. you're crazy. You know, you know how that is. <laughs> Yes, That's expected. true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, Renee, it's been wonderful talking to you today. And uh, let's keep oh. in touch. And uh, let's, uh, um, let's just say goodbye, and uh, we'll pick it up at another time. Okay, Paul. Thank you so much. I appreciate it for you allowing okay. me to talk about my targeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. You, you take care. Bye.